Hi, hello, good evening. Regarding the band classification, the final DM or DNB practical exam is incomplete without this question. And in order to achieve the success in the exam, it is very important to have a clear idea about this classification. And as per the 2019 latest class, uh, classification of this band, there are total of five categories. Category 1 is normal or non-specific biopsy finding. Category 2 is antibody mediated rejection. Category 3 is borderline. Category 4 is T-cell mediated rejection. And category 5 is polyomavirus nephropathy. This is the summary or the end slide of the gross classification. But before that, we will see how this band have evaluated and what is this band. In practical, it is an important question. They always ask what is this band? It is a place in Canada. So regarding the band classification, it is a uh, group which have made the nomenclature and the classification of the kidney transplant pathology. It was initially established in 1991 and every year Oh, sorry, every two years it will come up with the regular update after analysis the evidence based report from various pathological and nephrological groups. So, it is the uh, allograft pathology in an international consensus health classification for the reporting of biopsy is mainly from the kidney transplant. And as I told, every two years it undergo a review and updates. So since it is mainly done for the renal allograft biopsy, a slide regarding what are all the uh, indications of biopsy. Since you are in the final part of the nephrology residency, hopefully you might be knowing all these unexplained rise in creatinine. When it not written to the baseline after the rejection, in case of delayed functions, Whenever there is a new onset proteinuria or unexplained proteinuria, this is a very common question in your practicals. This slide shows the what are all the changes or the updates, important landmark updates, which have occurred over the period starting from 1991 and the latest is of 15th update, which is of 2021. So you can go through in detail the first band meeting. And in Canada, the C4 D staining, ABMR first recognition, the criteria was first used in 2001, the important landmark which I have made in 2007, including the peritubular capillary is grading, and one more criteria C4 D without evidence of rejection. As you see the updates in 2009, 13, 15 and the latest is the introduction of artificial intelligence, the digital pathology. So these are all the various landmark updates which occurred over the period of two to three decades. So before this ban, the rejection was classified into four types one is hyper acute rejection acute rejection accelerated acute and the chronic rejection hyper acute occurs within hours acute within five to seven days accelerated acute in the aggressive form of acute rejection and another one is a chronic slow progressive form regarding the first meeting this if you know the answers of these uh, updates, there is a high chance you will get a better score in the exams. So initially they have told more than 7 glomeruli, 1 artery and uh, there are some initial uh, grading of the acute rejection as mild, moderate and severe. Some scoring they have used. 
the uh, totally there were six categories in 1991 including the normal hyper acute rejection borderline and the acute rejection chronic allograft nephropathy in detail i am not going because the topic to cover it entirely it might take one to two hours just to giving the overview so there were six categories subsequently in 1997 for the adequacy of specimen it has changed into uh, two cores of tissue containing more than 10 glomeruli and at least two arteries and uh, the second one hyperacute rejection was renamed as antibody mediated rejection and again they have subclassified into hyperacute and accelerated acute just remember in 1997 the change from 7 to 10 glomeruli was made and hyperacute uh, was changed into antibody mediated rejection and there are few uh, further changes with respect to the acute rejection because the pathology and the pathophysiology clinical outcome varies with the severity of the insult so there was a constant update of the previous criteria they have started identifying and grading the things and with respect to on 2001 these were all the updates why they have introduced the c4d is so they started observing the graft outcome in those patients the c4d deposition and those without c4d deposition were different and the tubular hlet dr expression was the morphological feature most closely linked to deposition of c4d so c4d in the peritubular capillaries were accepted as a marker of antibody mediated rejection in 2001 and since it has a varied outcome this has been incorporated in the classification so c4d positive and c4d negative the treatment have some uh, impact with respect to the pathological finding in the graft biopsy so they have incorporated regarding the details of the study you can go through here so again there are new finding came up even if there is a c4d in the renal biopsy specimen many a times it might not correlated with the uh, amount of rejection so these kind of studies started coming in so there was a further update so as of 2001 criteria for acute abmr there should be three criteria one is morphological evidence of injury immunohistological evidence should be there interaction of the antibody and the antigen third is the presence of antibody in the blood that is serological evidence so there should be three evidence interaction morphological damage and the presence of antibody in the blood so again in 2005 the major changes were the antibody mediated and t cell mediated rejection they have introduced and again the antibody mediated rejection getting classified into acute or active and the chronic one and the chronic allograft nephropathy has been eliminated which was introduced in 1991 with respect to the chronic allograft nephropathy since it is not a homogeneous entity there are various etiology which can cause this so the, since it is non specific they removed this so again that category 2 which is antibody mediated rejection they have made it as acute active chronic active and chronic inactive types and the three categories remain the same there are few minor updates over here you can go through this table and there are few updates with respect to category 4 category 5 2007 the changes are mentioned over there as i told the band working group and in pathology and nephrology the clinical data there will be a lot of working group finally they will came up with these updates because the outcome of the graft varies with the 
pathological finding and the treatment also varies and the response varies so that's why the, there is a constant update based on this international consensus with respect to 2013 criteria as i told i am not going in detail because uh, the changes are with respect to the individual components but grossly the three categories morphological evidence serological evidence and the interaction evidence should be there and subsequently the subclassifications were there and again 2015 2017 secretary have been updated and this is the latest to 2019 and with respect to the first slide there are five categories first is normal second is antibody mediated rejection third is borderline fourth is diesel mediated fifth is polyomavirus nephropathy this is in summary in detail with respect to the 2019 abmr the questions will be definitely there so they have made it as acute active chronic active chronic inactive and one more category c4 destaining without evidence of rejection so regarding how to diagnose all say under the abmr there are four categories under each there are three categories with which we have to uh, diagnose using these criteria. the antibody mediated rejection itself is a big topic which the discussion might warrant about one to two hours so if anyone want a clarification of abmr just let me know i will try to make a video but uh, as of now be prepared for the questions like what is the latest band where is band what are the major uh, landmark changes in the band and even if you are not knowing the previous update you should be thorough with the latest update which is of 2019 and if you uh, like the involvement of artificial intelligence in 2021 How to create the category 5 polyomavirus nephropathy what how the uh, how to label it as v1 v2 tubulitis 1 2 ptc what are the criteria everything they will be asking in detail and how to label what are the criteria to say uh, glomerular basement membrane multi-layering these are all the some of the common questions being asked and you should know how to diagnose this i ifta t ifta everything so this ppt is a very lengthy one so i'm stopping it here rest if anyone uh, wants i will like um, upload another video detailing about the 2019 bam criteria only